and welcome to another live demonstration. Today I'm going to show you a technique. Now it's something I haven't done much of, so I've had to learn, try and understand what the technique is. It's oil dry brush. So this is where you can use oil paint on paper because you take a lot of the oil out of the paint. Um, the paper, most pe I've read a lot about it and a lot of people use lots of different types of paper. Some prepare their paper beforehand, as you would do with the gesso. Some don't, because of the oil taken out of the paint doesn't affect the paper. Now, I'm a little dubious about this. If it works for other people, that's fine. But I do know that there is a fabulous paper on the market which is actually suitable for oil paints but looks and feels like a watercolour and that's the Arsh um, oil paper. Um, so it's got that lovely feel and texture of a watercolour paper but accepts oil so it's been prepared um, in the process of manufacturing to allow um, oil paints to work with them without deteriorating over time. So it's the oil in the paint that leaches into the papers and it tends to make them brittle and over time they can um, crack and break. Well, this paper has been designed not to do that. It has archival properties and can be used with oil paint neat straight onto it. But I'm going to use a dry brush technique. I'm using the Artisan water mixable oils mostly because I don't like the terps which you need for cleaning. And these are really suitable because you just clean with water. You can mix with water as well. Um, not overly ideal because water is not adhesive. What you're doing is you're diluting. So there are plenty of mediums for water mixable oils. So if you're using a water mixable oil, use water mixable e mediums if you want to keep that water mixable quality. They're perfectly suitable to be mixed with traditional oils. All you do is you just lose that water mixable quality. So I'm going to squeeze out. I'm using a black onto a piece of tissue paper. Um, the reason for this um, is it's going to take out some of the oil. It's going to leach into the paper, which is helping with my dry brush technique. Now, I've got a lot of brushes on the table, which is very unusual for me. The reason is, as you move around, you kind of feel whether the brush is working or not. So I ten couldn't decide which brush worked best. So I put them all on. Um, it, it is practice. It's like I say, I haven't done this technique very often at all. This is fairly new to me. Um, but each time you do it, you learn something new. You learn which brushes work for you. You learn what papers work for you. So I'm going to do this orangutan in this dry brush technique. And it can be used as a preliminary sketch to, so you get your tonal values on and then you can build up colour on top of. I'm just going to keep it that lovely black and grey and white um, image. So I'll, my first layer, and it's going to be about layering, I want quite a soft layer. Um, I printed out my original uh, picture in colour and black and white because that helps give me the tonal values. I'm just going to softly put on colour. And again, I may jump around, but you can see there how it's going on. It's the flat end is giving me um, a sharp edge. So I'm just changing to a filbert with the rounded edge and see if that works. Like I say, I haven't yet decided on which brush works best. That's a little better. It's giving me that much more rounded. So I don't know if you can see the marks there that the flat brush was giving, but now I've changed to um, a rounded end. It's much softer and giving me much softer lines. I'm doing it in a circular movement and I will change the direction depending on where I am, but on these um, cheek pads, because this is a mature male orangutan that have these great cheek pads. It, by just using this technique, 
I can just fill that up quite quickly. Now, probably a little bit flat at the moment, but that's easy self because you can actually go back in with an eraser. So using the tissue to take off as much oil as possible. And a very soft touch gives you some nice lines. What I am doing is I'm looking at the darker areas because I'm looking for tonal values. So I'm looking at where it is darker. And I'm going to leave the light areas as much as I can. So it's a lot lighter down the nose, but much darker under the eyes. So this is, you're kind of preparing your tonal values. You're not yet putting on, see that's quite a nice soft, by just using it on its edge like that. And you, so you can build up your tonal values very quickly or you take a little bit more time and build up your layers a little bit more softly. I'm limited by time, so I'm just going to see how much I can get done. We've got all day. Oh, I've got all day. Well, then I can really go to town on it. But I will probably have got a little bored by then. I actually like to work really quickly. It's just something I like to do. I'm not fond of going back into paintings I have done and I will do if I have a, a piece that is important that I spend time on it but for me I like the look of a piece that's got that sketchy feel it just kind of tells you a story of about how the piece has been put together so you see the marks you see brush marks and I do know that on softer paper these lines can be softened and smoothed even more. So I've seen some really, really fine detailed pieces. And again, that will be layering and blending and working very softly and having the right brush. So all I'm doing is just moving the little bit of pigment I have left on my brush around. I do have some orangutan facts for you, but I'll probably save them up. Um, and they will, I'll tell you them as we progress. So that's actually quite quickly built up that shape. What I don't like is this, some of the lines I want to soften it. And that's just going to be easily done by using the brush. So all I will do is go over some of those harsher lines and let's go into here and I do know the male orangutans do have moustaches here on their cheeks and I'll show you how I will bring that back so this is more the mid-tone at the moment just thinking about Mid-tone and dark tones, the lights, all, I'm thinking of it as a whole, to be honest. The lights I'm leaving, and you can build up your darker tones over time, but I need to plan and decide where my darker tones are. Okay, let's just do the whole and take away that fear you have of a white space. I want to show you how easy it can be. Very soft here. Then it changes because we have the texture of the hair. Using the texture of the brush. So at the moment it's, it's very flat. So what I'm going to do, see if this one works. A bit too big. I'll try this one. I'm going to start now to build up. 
some darker tones. I'm going to start the eyes. So these are recessed, so they're a lot darker. See that next layer? Now that's darkening. Much darker here. It's all to do with just layering and building up. Just keeping that glint of light. The brush is falling apart. Probably the reason is, it's not the brush's fault, it's my fault. The paint's coming off here. Chances are, I've been... Um, don't normally, but it's been stood in water, and that allows the water to get into the wood, and therefore um, swell, and it takes the paint off. Or, it's been cleaned directly into water. So I usually just clean the ferrule and the head, but if someone's dropped it into a sink and then cleaned it that way, that can um, cause the paint to come off. I would usually just put a piece of masking tape around it. But usually it's not a fault of the brush, it's a fault of the person who's been using it or cleaned it. Or even been left sitting in a damp area. This, in fact, out of all the brushes I've had, I very rarely get this. It's just more than likely been left wet. You can see there, just building up those dark tones. So, looking down here, this is quite much darker. So the orangutan is one of the great apes which we are classed under and it's a highly intelligent animal, uses tools. They're arboreal which means they spend most of their time up in the trees which accounts for their shape, their legs aren't very long and strong for walking because they don't need to, they need their upper body strength for the trees and unlike other apes they don't walk on their fists like this they walk either on their palms or the side of their hands all very interesting, I mean Sad fact is, they're highly endangered animals. Okay. Just look at, it might be being a bit too soft at the moment. So, quite a lot darker in here. You just see how just suddenly a little bit of a brush stroke really makes it ping together. I quite like doing this kind of thing, this one colour. It really just helps you think about your lights and darks. So the nose is a little lighter, but not completely white, so I need to I'm going to drop down into a small brush. Again, this is unusual for me. I will usually find the bigger brush works for most of my work, but because I'm really thinking about detail, I'm going to use the brushes that work for that. Might even go smaller. There we go. Nearly stopped my brush in water, I forgot. I'm just going to probably go a bit darker, a bit quicker than you need to, or you can do if you're doing it on your own. I just want to get on and be able to do an almost complete piece 
in the time. Apparently all day. But I think Gary's got other things to do. So a little bit more colour. see there how that's starting to but it's not dark enough I don't what you've got to be careful is not yet to go into that really dark tone so looking at the piece this eye is the darker piece darkest bit and there's a nice Bit of darkness under here. Sorry. There's some dark coming over there. Right. I'm going to work on this eye and get it. So you see how much darker you can still go. And it's all to do with taking the oil out of the oil paint. And I, I have said that you can use it on other papers. I just, I'm unsure about it. Don't know what, how long it has. So if I'm unsure, even though it does work for other people, I know this paper it's perfectly suitable for this kind of technique and I'm not going to have any issues with archival properties because this is what this paper is designed for. Right. Right, next eye. So you can take your time to build up layers a little bit more slowly and you can see with a little bit more paint it doesn't soften I've probably gone a bit too strong too quickly pull that over and you get um, with the more pigment you don't get quite a softer line but I actually like that and I'll show you when I do the hair the wonderful orange hair of the orangutan orangutan meaning it's from the Malayan word it's either human or man it depends on which bit you look at so human man of the forest, which is really apt. So that's what orangutan translates to. Okay. So let's think about dark areas. The nose. So this bit of the nose is the darkest. So mid-tones, pretty much the mid-tones I wanted. Now I'm going into the darker tones, not completely dark. I still need to go into the eye and really go back into that. But the next layer of darker tones, just looking at the shape. So there were traditionally two species of the orangutan, but I think it was 2017 they discovered a third species. So there's three species of the orangutan and they've all got slightly different features. I think, I'm not sure, but I think this is a Sumatran orangutan. This is an image taken and used with permission from Gemma, um, who I work with, which she took in a zoo. But I haven't had a chance to actually find out what type looking at the differences between the three species I think it's a Sumatran I just love the characteristic face I 
And again, it's all to do with working, being able to keep layering and building up. You don't have to rush this. It's actually quite satisfying. You can spend your time. I'm going to take this down more. Reshaping. Keep looking at the original, just seeing the shapes and how I can move those. Right. I'm going to go back up to a bigger brush because I'm starting to fiddle and I want to add some darker tones on. Take off the pigment. Don't want to go too dark yet. Much darker here. Darker on this side. And you can see maybe here by adding the extra pigment, the different textures you get. Now I'm using the texture of this paper. I think I've turned it over. I'm using the smoother side. So it's very much like a knot surface. And the same with any um, watercolour paper or even um, other types of paper. They have two sides. So I've chosen the flatter side. It's all to do with how they're made and they go through felts and there's a wire side. Most papers are perfectly suitable to be used on both sides. Um, some papers, especially with watercolour, just have to check about sizing. If they're sized on both sides, absolutely fine. If they're only sized on one side, then that one side is the side that will work best for the techniques it's suitable for. See that? And that's just now starting to give it that 3D. Right, like the shape here, I need to reshape because it has a dip there. Let's go over here. This is where the hand, I think, is holding an apple, a bit of apple. But I'm not going to show that. So that's going to be one of the darkest areas because it's an inside bit. You can see there, nice and dark. Let's bring this up. Just give it a little bit more shape. More sh you, yes. Sorry, uh, wait, what, what makeup paper is it in, did you say? It's Arsh um, oil paper. So it's suitable for oil paints. I can use oil straight on it without having to do the dry brush. It's designed to take, not allow the oil of the paint to leach in and therefore disintegrate the paper over time. So it's fabulous. It's, it's not, not many people know about it. And I know people do like the f look of an oil painting on, um, a watercolour type surface and this is absolutely perfect for it. It has all those archival qualities that you should be looking for. It will not disintegrate due to the oil over time. It's been designed not to. Right, so top of the head here is going to be much darker. So I've just darkened off here. I think I'll have a break because I need to just reevaluate, look back, decide what bits I need to do. But I don't know if you can see, but it's really satisfying when you just add that extra bit of dark tone. I think the whole thing starts to come alive. Just needing to be, because I'm impatient, I'm just needing to remember not to whack on the black straight away. Right, I'm going back in for another layer, just to darken. There we go, 
this nice and see that it just makes a difference it really does so lots of layers soft layers can really build up to like I say I've seen some fabulously detailed really precise pieces I like I like a bit of a more sketchy feel but that's just preference but if you have the time you can Just keep layering. I might have gone in a bit hard there. But let's see what happens. When it's very hard like that, it is a little bit more difficult to move. That's working okay. Really much darker. I can hear them. So what you do by putting that dark area there, you can then think about actually where is it darker elsewhere, which tonal values kind of match. On this side here, does make him giving that lovely shape. So if that's dark there, this has got to be just as dark inside. And I will need to revisit the eye. Right, I'm going to finish the eye off and then take a break. I is the darkest. Arian, I don't think I'm getting that quite. across there just work in get some eye and step back okay like I said, I'm going to take a short break, give me a chance to look at, reevaluate, think about whether it's dark enough or what areas I need to work on. So join me in a moment after a short break and we'll continue and build up and add those nice final layers. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalog with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration for the magazines. It's be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it.
Hello and welcome back. So in that short break, I have had a chance to think, well, actually, I need a little bit darker area and um, I'm going to, what areas I'm going to work on next. And I, it, I know I'd say it very regularly, but it's a really useful um, skill to be able to walk away. It just, you come back and you see things and go, ah, that will help. Okay, so onto the hand. I'm going to change brushes and go down. So here where the fingers are creased, that's got to be darker. Let's look at the shapes that the folds in the fingers make. I've got a nail there actually. So the fold of the fingers the inner bit is going to be darker. It's going to be where it's folding in on itself. Let's go a little darker. You can see how you can just add in that darker tone suddenly brings it back to life. What's hard is to Keep the light. That's the hard bit. Just keeping the light. But I will show you what can be done with this dry brush technique. So it has. So at the moment the hand's quite smooth. You can see. <coughs> My brush wasn't giving me what I was looking for. So that's why I've got all these brushes can just feel they have creases so these are those little details that just help bring this to life a little bit more again let's go in darker what I'm looking at is sh the shape that the creases make So a bit of negative painting, which you do with your watercolour, will help bring this forward. Again, look at the tonal values on the back. And these little details, these little lines. The nail is even darker. And then there's a dark pad here. I'm not trying to do a realistic um, drawing, not on in this work. But what I am doing is I'm constantly looking at details which if I pick out will help make things work. Okay. So here, got some lovely, you see how quickly this works. It really does work really quickly and effectively. Again, look at the lines look where the shadow will be so go back in again add little areas of darkness You can be a bit rough on your brushes, so don't use your best brushes. Right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on the hair. 
then come back and finish the detail in the face. So this is a watercolour rake brush. Not sure if it will work, but I'm going to give it a go. But after I've put some detail down, some shading and shadow, that's quite dark there. Like I say, I can show you a technique on how I can bring out some of the lighter tones I may have lost. I'm skipping the brush across. So here, it's here. And if you go really lightly, see how you can bring out those lovely fine hairs that are sticking out from the coat, hair. I think they have hair. See if this rate works. I, I really don't know because I've not tried it. Oh yes. Often people will ask me, does a watercolour brush work with oils? Does an oil brush work with watercolours? To be honest, you need to just test and find out whether it works for you. The one thing I would suggest, if you have used a watercolour brush like this, what I wouldn't do is go back and use it for watercolour again. I'd keep it as an oil brush. The reason being is you're never going to get it clean enough that it might not um, contaminate any watercolours that you do. It's quite dark here. I don't think I'm getting that yet. I think putting it on the kitchen roll really helps to get the oil out of the paint so it, it, you work quite quickly getting these lovely tonal values, not dark enough. So let's go and darken this first. So it's all those kind of things you kind of know it's not quite working. It's not giving you the effect you want. So the great thing about this is you're talking layers. So you can just, it's better, much darker because this area is going to push the, oops, too dark. It's going to push the face forward if I darken it off. Now I went in a bit too keen there, a bit over keen, but with a bit of work, I can take this back. And use that pigment across the board. So now that's very dark, so this needs to be just as dark. Just using that pigment off. We're going to be darker here. Let's go in with, let's try a longer brush a stiffer brush. So this is a traditional hog hair brush. The reason I'm using it is because it is that traditional stiff brush so I know it will give me this quality of mark I'm looking for. So the softer brush was used for the softer tones Now, just using the stiffer brush for hair. The rake could have worked if I had a little bit more time. But for this, I'm just going to I'm going to keep some light at the top here. You don't need to suggest do the top of the head. It's there, your mind already kind of knows. 
but it's there. See, the brush does the work. It's, it's absolutely great when they're quite long. So look at the direction of the hair. That all just adds darker let's be a little bit more controlled it's quite a small brush so okay I'm pushing the brush into the paper to really capture the texture. That's quite dark. You don't have to do every individual hair. Just soften that up a bit. If you just look at the direction that they're going, that will help bring it all together. So he has really soft hairs coming out of his cheeks here. Like I say, I would spend a lot more time really building up detail. And then he's got hairs here. And he also has those white hairs. Using the edge just to capture so not only see which brush works, but change the direction and change how you hold your brush. I need to stand back because I can't always see quite the same as you can. I'm going to do one thing because that's bothering me. just need to f bring the face out here and soften. Right, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to show you. So... I mean, like I say, I could work on it, keep going. What I'm going to do is show you how you can take back um, you, this oil painting and use an eraser. So it's all these tiny little dot shapes he has around his face. I can actually gently create another texture. I've got a variety of erasers. This is quite fine. I don't know if you can see, but that's really giving that extra bit of texture that you can see with the detail of the skin. I'm jumping around again. Look at that fine detail. I can get this. I, well, this is one of my favorite. Um, going to go in a little bit quicker with my electric razor. And here I have the moustache. So these tools are really good and it's 
nice to know that you can use them with this oil painting technique. You don't want to make him look completely like he just has spots. I'm looking for texture. So it gets a bit dirty. Again, what I would probably do is I would only use, you get lots of little refills with this and I'd probably be careful how I use this one I've just used on um, this oil paint because the oil paint, what I do find is it, the, it raises just tend to stick a little bit into the oil paint and I can't always get it off but it's just adding more texture lovely lines and fine bits this is the time where I would take a lot more time and detail just to be able to bring out these details but I'll have another 10 minutes I think because I'm sure you're going to get wanting to have a go rather than watch me I'm jumping around this is just that's me sorry I just see bits that I can work on let's try using the flat one now while it gets quite dark it is a little bit more difficult to lift off but you see those little fine hairs I had on the hand? I'm now able to bring back, add some dimension. And it's all these little details which, in the end, pushing that quite hard. So while it's very light, you actually can take the hairs off quite easily. Don't like this bit yet. It's too even. So back to the little dots. Sorry. So you can see the easier areas are the ones. Just add that texture. Or the lighter areas which I can definitely bring back. Need to just stop jumping around. What I'm trying to do is do it quite quickly for you. So I don't know if you can see, but that really, and if I don't, if I've gone too harsh, I can just soften back again. Some little white marks on here. Use this, see if I can take off. Oops, caught drying. Now, I did wonder how well it dries or how quickly it dries. I did a piece a couple of weeks ago. That's, you look at that, I can take it back. I'm gonna be careful now so I don't. Um, and it feels fairly dry to the touch um, because it's the oil that takes the time to oxidize part of the drying process with oil paints. And again, it's all to do with 
how layered or how thick you've put the pigment on. But that's really good to know that you can. Like I smudged it there, it's easy enough to take it back. Do a little bit more, just a little bit more detail. Like I say, I can keep going on this for a long time because there's so many textures available in the face and the skin. All the way down here. Lots of thin lines, creases and wrinkles. Stamp that. <sighs> okay, so I think you can see and see how you can use the technique. Like I say, I will just keep working on it. There's lovely um, details on, um, so, but I need to stop. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. So this is oil brush technique using oil paint. You can use any oil paint you want. I chose to use the water mixable just for cleaning purposes. On, I've used Arsh's oil paper. Now, if you read about it, you can apparently use it on any papers. I just have the issue, I'm not sure that there will still be some oil left in the paint, how it may affect it at a later date. But a lot of people have been very successful. But you can do it on canvas. You can do it on paper that's been prepared with a layer of gesso if you're worried about it. Um, or, like I have used, a paper that is actually designed to use with oil um, paints. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is a new technique to me. I've had to think about and learn, and I will continue to learn about. I really enjoyed doing it. It's got a really nice layering effect it's quite common which is why i probably was quite a lot through it um and join us later in the week for a live workshop with claire warner <laughs>